functions, how everything works, okay? Um, and uh, this is Kevin Kerrigan. Kerrigan, you want to? Good morning. Um, Kevin Kerrigan, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. That's where our corporate office is. I've been with the company for a little over 12 years. Uh, I'm a sales engineer, which means I'm here to try to help answer any of the, the technical questions you may have, um, and here to assist Joe with that. Um, do we want to touch on certification or just yeah. kind of launch into? Well, let me let me introduce okay. us here first. Uh, Cutter Halk, Chris Cutter Halk. He is our account manager for Pennsylvania, and uh, he, you know, he's here. He just ordered some parts for your old equipment. We're your current provider on election machines. We've been we've had a long history with uh, Lebanon County, and Cutter's in charge of making sure our technicians are in place for you and anything that you need. Uh, Grant Matthews is from William Penn Printing. They're our partner in Pennsylvania. They are from right outside of Pittsburgh. Actually, kind of in Pitt. You're in Pittsburgh. You're in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you guys live outside. But uh, so the office is in Pittsburgh. We're actually also, uh, we have a very long uh, relationship with William Penn Printing. They do a lot of our service work, a lot of our preventative maintenance, and uh, they print ballots and do a whole lot of other stuff, supplies and everything. Um, we're also opening up an office in Montgomery County, uh, probably the first in July. And uh, so that we have another office here on the Eastern PA. Uh, this is going to be, you know, an interesting year and a half to two years for you guys and us. And uh, I think we're really fully prepared. We've already started building machines for Pennsylvania. We started building them a while ago. We, we build them on projections and uh, feedback from county election directors. And uh, we, we're already in, in the process of getting ready for Pennsylvania. Um, certification was a very interesting thing we had some of our equipment here certified in Pennsylvania and then all of a sudden they said well it has to be certified in 2018 and it kind of threw us a curveball uh, so under the same standards that we certified with with them before but it's something we're not really gonna argue the point with them because we're scheduled for Ju June 25th in two weeks to come in with all of our products so it, they, they, the state promised they're going to push everybody through. I think we're first in line and uh, we're, we're ready to go. Uh, I actually will be there the first day of the certification and um, we're hoping they do push us through, give us that cert by midsummer, and we'll be ready for everybody with any product that you pick from. Uh, the one, okay. yeah. um, so since we're your current provider and, and given the time, I'm going to try to go pretty quick through this. But we, we just want to touch a little bit about, about es and as a whole and give you an opportunity if you have any questions about the company before we get into products. So with that said, um, we are a full solution provider. We do provide all the voting equipment we're going to show you today. We do voter registration and electronic poll books. So we, we want to be the one-stop shop for any of your election needs. Um, we have over 450 full-time employees and this is all that we do is elections. Um, there's about 250 of us in Omaha, you know, developers and things like that. And then the other 200 are based in the territory. And we have a pretty strong presence here in Pennsylvania. Some of the people that we just introduced, you know, live and work here every day. Uh, I myself have been coming to Pennsylvania since 2010. I used to manage that certification process for us in Pennsylvania. So I used to take these machines and work with the state to to walk it through its paces and for them to prove that it works. Um, then we have a host of other people that are dedicated, to, that are assigned to Pennsylvania. Um, people that uh, Mike probably works with technical support and order entry and all those people that, that you're able to call at any time uh, as a customer of ours. So um, with that, you know, we we pride ourselves on our service here. We, we measure after every major election, we survey our, our customers, and these are just some survey results from the last couple of years in Pennsylvania. On a scale of one to five, we've been scoring pretty well, and we're always trying to trend upwards, but we just ask them things like, are we delivering high quality service? Are we responsive to your needs? Things like that, and uh, we've been doing well in Pennsylvania, and like McKean County says, software support has been exceptional, so. Um, with that, you know, this is kind of where we sit in the United States. The blue represents, if that's visible at all on this little screen for some of you all, but uh, blue is good by ESNS standard. Uh, to quantify that another way, like the 2016 presidential election, 56% of the vote was counted on ESNS equipment. And the reason I do that is not just to, as like a corporate brag, but you guys are making a decision on a vendor here that you expect to stand behind you for over 10 years. You know, this is a 15 year plus capital investment. And there's been a lot of companies that have come and gone 
in this in this business in this industry and we feel like we are a very financially reliable choice in that regard we've been in business for 40 years uh, and we stand behind all of our machines we have never in our entire company history sunset a piece of equipment we have never told a customer Sorry, we don't support that anymore. We don't have parts for that anymore. We, we have never discontinued service on a piece of equipment. And I think that's an important statement that we have 40 years of experience standing behind uh, that's important when you, when you look at that long-term investment. So with that, I hope I didn't ramble through too fast, but is there any questions about es &S as a whole before we get into products? All right, let's do it. So two quick things to touch on, Kevin. I, I have the Massachusetts, Vermont area too, and I was in Massachusetts. And our predecessor to our optical scan machine that I'm going to show you was the M100s. Well, a lot of little towns up there are still using the Eagles. Well, they were sold 30 years ago, and uh, they're still running, and they're still we're still supporting them. A whole bunch of little towns in Massachusetts are still using that product that was made 30, maybe 25 years ago. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is when I started es &S, because of my background as an election director and also selling for the last four years, they asked me to come to Omaha and meet with the pole book developers. I met with, I walk in the room, there's about 11 or 12 developers just picking my brain, which I don't know why they wanted to do that, but they, they picked my brain for a good four or five hours, and they showed me all the new screens that are coming and everything, and they asked me questions on what I thought it should be. Uh, and then the next day, I met with about four or five of, of voting machine developers, and they did the same thing. They wanted to know my opinion, if you have any advice, if you, and they're still on conference calls all the time with stuff on new products, and it's, it's a really neat process because they, they wanted me included. We actually have an advisory group of election directors throughout the country that meet and they share products and we show them new products coming out and, and everything else, and they meet about our service and support and our pricing. And um, from all over the country, there's one, one election director from Pennsylvania that's on that advisory board. And we really value their opinion, and I really like that, that we're always asking for someone, hey, come help us, what do you think, people in the field. Um, with that, I'm going to get into the product now, and we're going to try to get through it. The one thing that we really pride ourselves is how easy it is for the poll workers. And I'm going to show you our optical scan machine first, but at the end of the, as, as we finish showing you the products, I'm going to pull together the fact that we have really three options for you to decide on. So I don't really like to talk too much about the options now, because I'd like to show you the products first, but, you know, there's really some options. We don't want to just say, well, this is all we're selling, because we, we have a vast variety of products that we want to be able to show you. So the first thing I'm going to show you is our optical scan machine. And this is exactly what it sounds like. Well, most of the country, when they, when they go to paper ballot, they get a paper ballot like this, they fill in the oval, they put it through a scanner. Okay, so that's the first piece of equipment I'd like to show you today. Our scanner is really, it's on wheels, they lock down, they roll through uh, anywhere you need to roll them through, okay? The first step, really just four easy, easy steps. As a matter of fact, our pull worker instructions for our equipment, this machine is open, close, that's it. For the, for the machine behind me, the express vote, open, close. And that, those are your whole procedures as poll workers on how to get our equipment open in the morning and close at the end of the day. So we think we definitely have the easiest for the poll workers on the market. <coughs> I'm going to open up the back. Let me explain the keys. You have two, two keys. Okay, that's all you will need. They operate all of our equipment. Okay, one key is for all the doors and to open up the equipment. The other key really goes to everything important, where we have our media at the end of the night for you to send back to us and or to get in to change the paper roll, things like that. It's like a barrel key. So if you were to be missing a key, not that you guys would ever not send out a key. The, the easy question is: it round or is it a regular key? And uh, they would be able to send that out to you. So you open up the back door of the machine, and there's a cord. Okay. Force tab. I always leave my key in there. So I'm going to spin it around, and I'm going to plug it in. That's so step can you, one. Can you spin that just so we can kind of see how what you did there, just real quick? I just pulled the just pulled the cord out. I did. Well, like, <laughs> so yeah. it. Open like the door. Well, you couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. No, there's just a door in the back. There's a door in the back, and there's a power cord in the back. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. That's all. Sure. 
and then I'm going to turn it so the front of the machine is now facing. It's the only time you really have to get into the back of the machine. And I'm going to plug it in. If you listen, the little beep, it just shows that there's power in there. We have another method to show you there's power. But sometimes you're in old churches, the outlet might be dead, or you forgot to turn the power strip actually on. So it just shows you that there is power. Um, it's got a four to six hour battery backup built in, so it'll run without power, but you would like to have power so you're not draining the battery yet, obviously. Okay, step two is to come to the front of the machine and just open it up. Now that can be locked too. Can make sure you can lock the front of the machine. I just had it unlocked there. Okay, it's on springs. It's not, I mean, not springs, <laughs> shocks, so it's not going to come down. It's going to stay up for you, okay? And then the lid, which also can be locked down, you just raise the lid. That is step two. That just turned the machine on. Okay, so you, step one is plug it in. Step two is turn the machine on by lifting the lid. Okay, right now it's going to take about three to four minutes to boot up. Okay? Um, in that time, while it's booting up, I can show you a couple things. We have... Well, there's steel doors on the front, and you have an emergency bin here, and you see we have a little flap here, if you can see it over here, I'll, I'll spin it to you guys, a little flap. So if by chance the machine was down someday, or if it, the power was out for all day and you couldn't get a generator there, you could always put ballots into this slot. And you would open this door here, and just drop the flap bring it over and lock it back up. So if some, some kind of you know, catastrophe happened, you, people could still vote. They would just put the, the, the uh, we, everybody refers to it as an emergency pin. Kevin likes to see auxiliary pin because it's not really an emergency because people are still voting. Okay, uh, the big box on the bottom, I'll show you towards the end when we, uh, well, I'll show you now. So on here, what we have is we have two options for you. Well, most people will do when they have a ballot is you have a big tub and it is exactly what it looks like to you back there okay it's a big empty tub okay you go into the paper world now you have to have something to store the paper in okay that's just the way the, the you know the paper if you're going to have a paper trail that's the way it is okay so but what we've done is we've come up with a box and this box if you see the top it has keys and you can also put seals right here on it Okay, the ballots fall into there and it's like a suitcase with wheels that you can just take. So if you were to, if you were to want to have the box, it's an additional item, but if you were to want to have the box, the ballots would fall in here, the poll workers when they get the ballots at the end of the night, just pull this out, lock it, seal it, and put it in the car and bring it back. Okay, um, and that's, that's where your paper record would be. This would probably hold like 15 to 1,700 <laughs> ballots and um, the ballot box there is certified to like 2,500, but it can really hold four to 5,000. I don't think you have any precincts that big. Mm -hmm. um, or then at least get 100% voting. So I'm just gonna put that back in there and come back up top here. And, and so one of our procedures is, is to, to check the bin. The poll worker should always, no matter what system you buy, you should always check the bin just to make sure there's not a ballot from the prior election that was stuck in there or something. Okay, so that's part of like a procedure that Mike would send out. Okay, so all I did was plug it in, turn it on by lifting the lid, and printed a tape, which is an option to you if you want this to print, okay? This is like a machine info tape. What version software and things like that that come out, okay? What I wanna show you real quickly is, so I unplugged it. That beep will happen every minute machine will still work. You can still vote on it, but the beep's going to happen every minute. So the poll workers hear that and they know I, I got to get power to wherever we are, you know, because I have four to six hours. Really, when we say four to six, it depends how much you're being used. Presidential, it's going to be closer to four. In municipal primary, it's probably going to be closer to six, maybe seven or less, because you're just not using it as much. Okay? And you see there's a red, the, where the check mark was, it's now a red circle with the line through it, just to show the poll worker when they boot it up, there's no power. Okay, and we, obviously we've done a lot. Those were really suggestions from poll workers <laughs> that said, hey, you know, we don't know what, if it's got power or not. We lose a little battery marker and stuff. But, so now it's got the check mark back. And you open polls. 
So I've just opened the poles. It's going to start to print your zero tape in the, in the, for the beginning of the day. Um, how many do you send out? Three zero, print, zero tapes? So what, what you do is we would program that into the software so it would print as many tapes as you want. Okay, and it would automatically print it. If for some reason you needed to print more, you'd have to call the office and Mike could give you a password to go in there. When I opened that up, that could also be password protected for the poll worker in the morning. We just had the password turned off on this. Okay? Go to, go to voting mode. That's step four. Okay, so, so let's, let's, let's review. You plug it in, you open the lid, you press up, you check uh, the screen before you actually check the precinct. It was up there when I showed you the power. Check the precinct, check it as power, and then you go to voting after it prints the tape. It's ready for this first voter. And I was talking through a lot of that, but it was really only about three minutes, three to four minutes, okay? Um, we're going to go through our ballots with you. And your, your polling places are going to change if you go to a strictly paper ballot. Actually, no matter what, they're probably going to change, okay? So you would have your poll books. And you're going to have to have, if you're going to the paper, now this is option one, you go to the paper, you're going to have booths for people to vote and fill out their ballot, or this cardboard plastic that you can put on tables, that be, you know, and use tables for people to sit behind. I guess that's what you guys use up there. Booths. You have booths, mm -hmm. okay. Um, ballot is filled out. It can go in upside down, backwards, any which way, it doesn't matter. It really, and I want, to, I want you to pay attention to how quickly it actually drops into the box. So in that period of time, it took an image of the front and the back of the ballot. Okay, so it has an image that you can actually pull up in your software of that ballot. Doesn't know whose ballot it is because it's not doesn't have a voter attached to that ballot, but you can pull up that image. You can pull up the write-ins that are on it on that image. I actually have some write-ins here, so when we print out a results tape, you can see that we actually print a results tape with the write-ins on it at the end of the day too. So the write-ins will come out like uh, Justice Supreme Court, Bugs Bunny got a vote, Bugs Bunny's name will be under Justice Supreme Court. Okay, so I'm just going to throw a, a write-in through here um, just so you guys can see that at the end when we print the results tape. Now I'm going to show you two things that I, probably my favorite feature of any product that we have. Later on I'll probably pick another one that's my favorite feature. but. This is really one of my favorite, not only as an election director, but, well, I'll explain it to you. I overvoted two offices, okay? And, and the other offices I did not overvote. What the machine does is we try to make this machine so that the voter can get through this without needing a poll worker's intervention, okay? And I told you, I was a salesperson for four years, and I shouldn't bring this up, but I actually stood in a polling place. Most of the systems, the, the paper comes back to the voter, and I've stood in a polling place many times where we've trained the poll workers, don't go over and look at the guy's ballot, and we watch the poll worker go over, let me see that ballot, what did you do wrong? Because the ballot came back to the voter, and he can hear it kicking back out, okay? And nothing against our poll workers. I love you guys. Trust me, I do. I mean, you're, you're the arm. Without you, our, our elections just don't happen, right? So this suspends the ballot in the back of the machine. So the voter, now if the poll worker comes up to the machine, you filled in too many ovals and two contests. These votes will not count. Justice Supreme Court, you've, you chose two candidates. You're allowed one. Judge of the Commonwealth Court, you chose four candidates. You're allowed two. Doesn't, doesn't say who you voted for. So the, the poll worker, if he does look at that, the poll worker doesn't know who you voted for, just sees that you overvoted those offices. Okay, now the voter has a choice. I can return that ballot back to me, <coughs> okay, and then take this to the station that's handing out the ballots, spoil it, and whatever procedures that you guys would come up with, spoil the ballot, and then give them a new ballot. And then your counts will be on because you'll have spoiled ballots and then you know the new ballots, okay? But what I'm, the voter also has the choice of doing, the same screen's gonna come up. The voter can look at it and say, well, I don't really care about that office anyway. I was just voting for county commissioner and just cast the ballot as is. Those two offices won't count 
but the rest of the ballot will count. Okay? So it's very easy for the voter to get through that process without needing poll worker intervention. I'm going to put through a blank ballot. On this ballot, see the voter circled the names instead of filling in the oval. Okay? Which happens. Trust me, it happens. You guys know that happens. Your paper. Okay? The blank ballot goes into the machine and it's going to do the same thing as the overvote. It's going to suspend that ballot into the back of the machine. Blank ballot, you have made no selections. To correct your ballot, press return. If you want to cast a blank ballot, cast it. Now you don't have to spoil this because they can just go sit and fill out the ovals because they, they didn't fill out any ovals yet. They can just go back to a ballot marking station and fill it out. Okay. I'm going to put that back through. It's going to come up blank ballot. I'm just going to cast it. We do know there are a fair amount of people out there, not a lot, but there are people that will that want to go in and cast a blank ballot as like a protest or just to get their voter history or just to say they showed up. We all know them. They and, and they uh, people used to call me and say I voted a blank ballot. I'm like, well, why did you show up? But anyway. <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, does any have any questions about the voting process on this? I do. Yeah. Um, if, um, for example, you you have no power and you move on to the battery. Yeah. Um, as vote ballots are scanned, does it slow down as the battery juice wears down? No, it doesn't. But okay. it will also give you a battery indicator up here, and you can see the battery life getting lower. But it doesn't slow the process at all. It'll still be that three to four second process. The, the process is, I should have said this when we, when we had the ballots, depending on the length of your ballot, it can be 18, eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 14, eight and a half by 17, or 19. And it can be front and back. It scans about on both sides. I, I got it. Oh, thank you. Sure. You just got a close up of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, Okay, so anyway, so that, the, the, the amount of time that it takes to actually scan could be, you know, just, but it's not going to be much if you ha really have like a 19 inch ballot, which is very rare. Usually, PA, most of the ballots here are 8 and a half by 14, which is what we're using today, which is why we want to show you like apples to apples to what you're going to get. Okay, I'm going to move up. We're still going to leave this on because we're still going to use it, but I just want to move over to the next piece of equipment I want to show you. But I want to explain first. So, when most of the country has gone to paper ballot, say, you know, the whole paper ballot, you got to go to paper ballot, most counties bought one scanner for each precinct and one ADA marking device for each precinct. Okay? So, so I'm going to show you the next, the next step would be to have an ADA marking device at that precinct. Okay? Um, and I apologize, I meant to turn this off before we started, because I like to show you everything booting up. This is 16 pounds, okay, it's got a handle. You see the plug goes into the back and gets plugged in, okay, can everybody see that? It's a 16 pound piece of equipment, a little lighter than your eyeballs that you guys have, okay. In here there's a little toggle switch, it just says on and off, you just press that on. You open up the door with the barrel key. Okay, and that's how you turn it on. The SD card is in there as well. Yes, which we talk about at the end of the night. Yeah, so you have you have the well. This doesn't actually collect results. This does, but yes. Okay, so um, this turns on. It boots up. This actually is quicker than the DS two hundred because it's not printing anything. It's not thinking. All this is is an electronic pen. So it's for your ADA community to come in. And what I'd like to show you is. First, it is fully ADA compliant. We have, you, know, you can make the screen go black, you can make the tempo go faster, and I have seen visually impaired people put that tempo up to a point where I can't understand it. I'll go back and put it on, but they're just so, they can be so quick with that because the other senses obviously are, are better. Um, so we have gotten a lot of accolades on our voter. I'm going to vote as a touch screen, like you're familiar with now, but. Um, but the state of Michigan did a big study on the ADA community and had a lot of them came in and studied every vendor. And I'd love for you to go up and, and, and see it. Or look on their website, don't go to Michigan. <laughs> but um, because uh, obviously we're saying that because we did really well in it. 
We had uh, at the farm show, uh, I think the two commissioners at the farm show, we had uh, a visually impaired person come over and he, and he loved it. And I'm going to show you why in a second, but um, I'm going to show you the voting process first. So these little pieces of paper, they're cut out, that it have to be the right thickness, and have to be thermal paper. Everything that we have is thermal paper. There's no ink cartridges or anything on any of our equipment. Okay? Um, this, the voter would walk up, step that into the slot there, and the ballot comes up, and sorry, Elaine, you guys okay over there? Can you see? better. Now, uh, I don't know if you have any other languages in English and Lebanon. I've, Spanish. Do you have, do you do both ballots? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you guys, I no. don't think, do in the middle of nowhere. No. <laughs> no. So, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to click, click English because I wasn't really good in Spanish. This is straight party, okay, which obviously by law we have to have on there, but I'm not going to vote straight party. It was actually funny because I showed them straight party once and one of the commissioners, because the commissioners were there, I said, what party did you pick? So they picked green, and like, ah, you're lucky. <laughs> I was about to bust my chops. So I'm going to vote through the ballot by touching the screen just like you, you would on your iBotronics, okay? And I apologize if this is taking me really quick because it, it really is that simple, okay? Um, just getting through the whole ballot here. And now you get to your, your review screen, which you have on your iVotronics, okay? So the review screen has everything. It has a little checkbox if you voted all the, what do you vote for is in that office. The judge of the Commonwealth Court, it says, you know, you did, the contest is not fully voted. And it has who you voted for, but there I can go, click on it and go back, and it brings you back to where you were, and I voted the second person, now it has the checkbox. So it gives you that warning, it allows you to go right back and come right back to where you were. And at the end, it says, print card. And there are instructions on here for the voter, okay? So now, on your iMetronics, it's a DRE where you click cast vote, and the vote is cast. Here, it says print card. So when you print the card, all the, all the names, all the selections are printed on that card, okay? And with that card, you bring it over to the scanner, and it goes in the scanner, all your results are right here. Remember in the beginning I said this is really just an electronic pen? It's really for the, it was built for the ADA community to use that card, and that can go in upside down, backwards, anything in here too. Like I said, it's taking an image of both sides, okay? How many of those can you print, like, in an hour, or scan? Uh, it's certified for, like, six a minute, is it? Yeah, to the scanning part of your question, you probably get six through a minute. Yeah. Um, to the printing of it, you know, that's going to depend on the voter's speed. Yeah. Now, Joel, I have a question on that. Yeah. If, um, if a voter were to select straight party, does it still bring you to that review screen to show you like all the... Sure. Because you know how some people might want to vote, okay, say they select straight party Republican, but there's one office where they want to vote for Actually, Democrat. Actually, you're still going to go through all the offices. Okay. I'm going to do it for you. In English. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the top one is fine. Just the top one is fine, okay. What that is from here, just like Okay, so... Oh, okay, um, so it selects them. It, it actually still has all the, you still have to go through each screen. I think that's actually And then you can cool. unselect, like, the you, current system. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you don't have to deselect. You can well, you don't in your IVOs either, if you're voted straight party in the beginning. On a vote for one, if you press a new option, it automatically deselects one option and moves yeah. your vote okay. to the new See, one. I if it's a multiple vote for, you don't have to deselect party. first. So essentially you can't overvote then. Right. Exactly. And now of course the question wasn't voted because there's no party for the question. And then it still brings you to your review screen. Okay. Joe, okay. um, yeah. tell me, talk to me about calibration because that's what keeps me up at night with the IVOs. Okay. And the auto marks. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let me do calibrations in about two minutes, okay? Okay. I want to, so I wanted to show you a couple features of this first and we'll talk about calibrations. I'll probably hand that over to Kevin. But same thing and it has all your voted offices. And what the visually impaired person that came to the farm show said to me, he said, actually it was Cutter he was working with, he said, this came out of the machine. He goes, can I put this back in and check my vote because there's not one other system here I can check my vote. We said, absolutely. 
put the ballot back into the screen, and it's reading it just like this is going to read it. Okay, so it's reading the exact same things that this is going to read. Pulls it up. Now he's using a handheld device. Okay, it says you have inserted a card that has vote selections. To review the selections, print the card, print next. To return your printed card, place in the scanner box and hit exit. Okay, so I can see who I voted for on the screen, or I can listen to who I voted for. Okay, but I can't make any changes because it's already printed. You know, I already printed. Now, if I don't agree with what I just did, I can print that back out and spoil it and get a new blank card because this still hasn't gone through the scanner. Okay, because the scanner actually so. So for a visually impaired person, and, a, and a, as an example, there are some systems that have a separate printer. Okay, and that separate printer then, like a desktop printer you might have in your house, the piece of paper goes to that printer and then that person has to take the ballot off the printer and it's a piece of paper like, like our ballots that we put through that he can't check, he or she can't check. But here at least has some kind of size, he loved it. And we were really happy, obviously. So this I'm putting it in upside down and I'm actually just going to drop it into the box. Okay, yes? Can only people that need um, assistance. assistance, thank you, use that machine or can anybody use that machine? Anybody can, but that's, that's a procedural thing, but that's, you're jumping to my step too, but I like that. But yeah, there's, uh, but, but r real quick, that is a very good question. Anybody can use it. It's just your procedures if you want uh, lines. So I wanted to point out though that it, uh, you know, it has a headphone slot. It also has a sip and puff and um, a rocker paddle. Or, or anything that a voter might need. Now that they would probably bring in their own and, and plug it in because they're obviously using it often. But it has any, all ADA meets every ADA requirement federally and statewide. Um, the second thing is this also has a four to six hour battery life. Okay, self-contained in this. Okay, and I know there are some systems that don't have a battery backup that you have to have one of those UPSs there. In addition to if you have a separate printer, anything that has a separate <coughs> printer does not have a battery backup. Okay, that's why we have this all self-contained so that you have a battery backup of four to six hours. By law, EAC and state certified a minimum of two hours. Just so, you, so, so everybody is aware. Okay? Um, Kevin, you want to talk calibrations before we talk about uh, the, the, the next option for commissioner? Yeah. Um, it's, it's an easy topic to address because you don't have to calibrate. Um, in the, so we got 25,000 of them out in the field, and I have never had to calibrate a unit yet. And it's not because ES&S engineering is geniuses. It's, it's just where touchscreens have come to, right? Like uh, probably a lot of you have tablets at home, you know, iPads and things. You don't have to calibrate that, right? Like, the screen will probably break from it falling out of your lap before you have to do any sort of kind of calibration on it. So same thing here. It's just touchscreen technology has come a long way since the iVotronics, so I'm very pleased to say you don't have to worry about calibration. Uh, there is a calibration routine, um, but I've never had to use it. It's scout's honor. <laughs> <laughs> it's something you could go through if, yeah. like, with LNA or whatever. You could yeah. calibrate them just to be... You'll know when you're doing LNA because you're touching the screens, and if it was off by something, you, you would know. But um, and it, there's also over thirty thousand of these out in the field too. As a matter of fact, the state of Maryland has this system right here, one on one. Utah, the state of Utah is this what? Yep, they just bought? went statewide. That just went statewide in Utah for one on one of these. Okay, and now to get back to uh, yeah. commissioner's statement. So what happened with us is we built this as a, strictly an ADA piece. You know, to sell with our scanner for To ADA. replace auto marks. Yeah, to replace were, yeah. your auto marks. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what happened with that? And by the way, all of these will be ADA. They're all self contained. They're all, and they're always speaking. They're always speaking. So, anytime that headphone goes on, whatever screen they're on, it will start picking up right where it is. Okay. Um, it's not like you have, you have, I don't know if all your eyeballs have no, ADA. They, right. Just some are. So, yeah. so all these. Though. Okay. So, um, what happened to us is, a fair amount of counties are coming back to us now and saying, we don't want to print all that paper. We don't want to print it. It costs too much to print it every election. And not only that, now you have to adjudicate all of these ballots. And I'm going to give you a quick example. Um, in Virginia, they went all paper. 
okay? And in a 2016 general election, and I don't know if the commissioners, if you guys saw this, but the House race was 50 to 50, like 50 people in there. So whoever won this race was going to decide the House, Republican or Democratic. The Democratic voter won by one. For some reason, they were looking at ballots, and I guess they separated out overvotes. The overvoted ballot, one of those ballots had the whole ballot filled out Republican, but in that House off race had the Democrats selected with a big X through it and then selected the Republican. Well, it was counted as an overvote, so it didn't count because it had both boxes filled. Okay? It went to court, then it went all the way to the Virginia Supreme Court, and they said, well, I can decipher the voter intent, and he intended to vote, he or she intended to vote for the Republican mm -hmm. candidate. So we're going to count it. Now it was a tie vote, and they had to do a game of chance, and I think they flipped coins. Is that right? They flipped coins, and the Republican ended up winning just because of that overvote. So it's something like that, the counties that are, were DRE counties, like Lebanon County, that went to paper, just the printing costs and dealing with all that paper and the, and the poll workers dealing with it. Um, a lot of counties love it. You know, Lackawanna, Lebanon, uh, not Lebanon, uh, Susquehanna. Adams, Susquehanna. <laughs> you know, they all use strictly paper and they're very happy with it. But some counties, they, they just, just weren't happy with it. So they came back to us and said, can we just buy more of these for all the voters? Sure, you want to buy more products, absolutely. We'll print ballots for you, we'll, we'll sell you these, it doesn't matter. Because they started figuring out over time, 10, 15 years, because it's a commitment for 10, 15 years, printing all that paper. Pennsylvania, the law right now is 110%, not everybody abides by that. 110% of registered voters are supposed to print. You know, over time, the cost of that you know, was more than the amount that they bought of these. So we now have a fair amount of jurisdictions that are using these for all voters. So let's say you have four Ivatronics in a polling place, you might have four of these behind booths, and then they all come to the scanner and, and everything feeds through the scanner. So that, that would be a different option for the commissioners to consider as they go down the, down the path of, did, did that make sense? I wanna make sure I, I that's exactly what, what happened with us. We really built these as a one-in-one -one ADA, strictly paper ballot uh, system. And, and was really, you know, counties that came back. And it's such, the, the express vote itself is so easy to use. Everything's self-contained, it's 16 pounds. You get a paper trail of everything, every vote is, there's a paper backup. If you ever had to go to a hand count, you have a paper backup that the person sees and, and, and you can always do an audit of it. Okay. One more question on Yes. That. Um, like how you guys, with the auto marks that we have, they came with a table and a little privacy screen do you guys make a booth for that so i actually just ordered yesterday we have two things we i'm about to turn around i keep turning okay. my back to everybody we have uh like the, the cardboard privacy screens that will come out on the side which is a much cheaper option to put on tables with the cardboard um Hollister bunny did them for us from inclusion solutions okay you know, they deliver solutions. flat they're just flat in your but they just you open them up and they kind of hook on and or we have booths we actually have booths that will hold two of these or four of these. Okay. If you if you know you would only want one probably because you're just using an ADA. But like if the commissioners decided for all voters, we have booths that that will sell you know put one on each side, four sides or both. We actually have booths that will be this high for a wheelchair, and then other ones up higher and things like that. So there's a lot of options when we get to that. And there are other companies that sell booths too. But Inclusion Solutions made that specifically for our products. Okay. Um, sure. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna step over to uh, option three here. Do you want me to do it, or you want to do it? I'll do it. Okay, I'm so close. <laughs> uh, um, and, and the thing about this, there's not a ton to show other than the very end of the process. That's where that's gonna be different because what you see here, this white piece here, is the exact same piece of equipment that's on the table over there. Uh, the difference is it is mounted inside a kiosk. This kiosk has wheels, and after I vote on it a couple times. I'll show you how it collapses down for delivery and storage and, and what that looks like. But let me just go through a ballot here real quick. So again, exact same thing that you see there on the table with the ADA pad. And I'll just undervote everything. 
Oh, Joe, can that display be increased or decreased at all, or is that just what it is? Thank you. I'll, yeah, I'll touch on some of the features. Sorry, I said Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um, in line with that ADA compliance, we do allow for high contrast where you can put white text on black. I believe that's for uh, ocular degeneration. Mm -hmm. um, so, you can go to high contrast at any time. You can also uh, press zoom and blow up the text. The okay. text size on the original screen, as well as the text size in the zoomed in version is both programmable uh, during your election setup <coughs> uh, and you can also change language at any time we've shown you how you can choose English or Spanish at the beginning but you can change at any time as well Thank you. so the difference now is that button didn't say print card it said cast vote at the end because what's going to happen is it just printed everything as Joe showed you but then it's going to take it scan it and drop it in a ballot box here that's dangling off the bottom. So this is going to, you know, feel even more so like your current Ivotronic experience, uh, other than they had to walk to the machine with a piece of paper to kick it off. You can also set it up to have that card returned. That would be presented as an option to the voter at the end. It would say cast vote or return card so that they could also look at it and put it back in as programmable. Um, we expect a lot of people may not use that option because as you can imagine it's just going to have that voter spend more time at the machine but it, it's available for you if you want to provide yeah. that extra level is it, of is it avail um, available as an option for each voter if they want to hold it physically and look at it and then stick that's it correct in? so uh, it, it wouldn't be for everybody no for every voter I'm sorry I thought you used to ask if it's available for every voter it, no. is, it would be presented as an option <laughs> at that final confirmation screen so it's an option for every not one not an option for an individual voter I'm not understanding when you go difference. to the gas pump you have the option of getting a receipt or not mm -hmm. every voter every um, per purchaser gets to make that option is that how that works correct yes yeah every voter can choose if they want that's to correct. view their own ballot before they put it in that's correct yes. by holding the paper we have it set up to just cast it but yeah. in the program you can set up that every voter can either review or cast and if they review then they review and just put it back in and hit cast okay that's just storing it, correct? So you have just basically marked a ballot. Well, that I it's like. It's just going to be down in, in some type of storage, so that still would need to be yes. counted somehow, mm -hmm. correct? Also a scanner. Can, mm -hmm. A scanner to it, not a DRE. Never mind. Yeah, yeah it scanned the ballot it's and counted it. it. Oh, yeah. okay, so it's all yep, in one. It counted it, too. Yep. 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 Um, so th this door that's on the front would be locked during the day. I just have it open because I want to show you. When you're doing your opening, just like on your Ivotronics, you could say you had four Ivotronics today, you'd probably have four of these, and somebody could go down to the line with the USB stick and your poll worker would go through and open each one of them individually, and you can do that all on one stick. And just like at the end of the day, it will track which ones you opened, and then it will check them off as you're closing them at the end of the day. So as poll workers, what you would do is take that stick with the results on it at the end, and your one tape off the last machine, put that in a bag and that would go back to central. So Mike would only have one stick to collect for per poll site rather than per machine. Is that what, how you utilize your IVOs yes. today, using the master? So we, we did that exact same process here. Also underneath, uh, behind this lock and key, is the release for the ballot bin. So if you wanted to, you could return the ballots at the end of the night if that became the procedure. And this is what that looks like. You can see on the side as cards are piling up during the day, uh, this can hold about uh, 500 ballots. Uh, I've seen as many as 700, but you know I think all of our material says 500. That's kind of the safe number. For this. So, so you have extras of those if they fill up, like in a presidential year. That's right. And you can yeah. exchange it during the middle of the day. Yeah, if that's allowed. That's that's a procedural question, but I, I you know, if you had, I assume you have teams of rovers that go around. Maybe they have a spare in their trunk. I would recommend using the wire seal option here. This would be delivered sealed, and if a DNNR rover were allowed to, they could swap these out if it got full. Yeah. You also can take the ballots out of there, Commissioner. Yeah, if you didn't want to buy extra of these, or... maybe you maybe your procedure is to have them remove the ballots, put it in a secured bag, and transport the bag back, and then just put this back on. Could be another option where you're not having to buy extra of these. The, the, the thing is, you're, you would send out one per every maybe 300 or 350, 300 registered voters, so you it should never fill up technically unless the poll workers have them going to the same machine all the time. Do you understand me? Like if you were going to have a thousand voters, you'd probably send three of these out. So that way it, it shouldn't fill up as long as the poll workers are spreading them out. 
of which machines are used. Um, I'll, I'll wheel this around and show you the back side here in a second, but I'll point out, so this has a green bar. There's a green bar on back. I put the green on the green. And that's how I swap this in and out. So um, as you've seen me do it a few times, you can tell it's pretty simple. It just locks in, and now it's locked until somebody gains access to this again. Um, let me let me collapse this down. Or is there anything else voting wise? I mean, it's really the same experience. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If you need to collapse it out. Uh, so the scanner part is that bottom part of that whole unit. It's basically. the scanner's in here. Oh, so it's all actually all in one. Yeah. The the only thing the the so both of these have the ability to front eject, mm -hmm. like this one does, or rear eject. So when you program the stick, you are telling this machine how to operate as a ballot marking device or as a tabulator, and that's what tells the software which way to kick it. So by being in the kiosk, uh, it follows out the back and drops it into the ballot bin here. If I set this one up as a tabulator and put it on a table, it's still going to go out the back. Got it. So it's compliant through certification because of the, the ability to have the paper. I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. For some reason, I was thinking you never could have one thing that does everything anymore. Oh. I don't think you could have a marker and a tabulator all in one. We like. But I guess you can as long as you have the paper backup. Yes. Yeah. Count. So let's let's spell that out one more time because that is critical to this whole thing. Because when you vote on this, it feels like a DRE experience, yeah. especially if you don't have that card come back and you never see it. But the key here to why we're compliant is that when I finished my selections and said cast. It printed a card, a piece of paper with all those selections, just like this, and then it scanned this card, and that's how it counted the vote. It did not count my vote based on the screen touches I did. The screen touches I did created this, then it scanned this. That makes it a paper tabulation system by law. And and similar to our IVOs now, once they hit that cast, they're done. They're not going to get anything back that tells them to review or anything. That's a cast ballot. Right. It's done and you're not getting to spoil anything or redo or anything like that. So yes, sir. In, in a closed primary, would you need a machine for Democrat, Republican, separate? Uh, no. Um, got a few options. One is um, if you just put in a blank piece of paper, it would require somebody to select the appropriate ballot style, Dem or Rep. If you want to avoid having a poll worker have to intervene with the machine every time, you can pre-print a Dem and a Rep ballot style code on the piece of paper. Um, third option moves us into here. If you had an electronic poll book to check in, it would automatically put the correct ballot style okay. on the card. Set up to do it. Just make it come back. Hit issue. Well, I've never done this. <laughs> I've now done it once. Uh, it will pre-print the party style identifier on here. And then the voter would put this in, and nobody, uh, an election official wouldn't have to intervene. There's no voter information going on there from the poll book, just the ballot style. That's, pretty That's it. So yeah. to continue along, the, this is ADA compliant. There is an adjustment to put it at a wheelchair height. So if you did have a wheelchair voter, poll worker would have to come up and adjust that down if the voter would like. So that's just a little latch here in the back. Do I understand that these are uh, Windows based? No, these are Linux. Oh, they are. That's yeah. not what they set up there. Whoever answered it, okay. Uh, our op our programming software operates on Windows. Maybe that was the answer you got, depending. Okay. But all of our voting machines operate on a Linux OS. And then, um, do I understand that your delivery time is thirty days to four months? It depends on the piece of equipment. They all have different lead times. If you're talking about how long it takes from the time you sign a contract to when we deliver, it, it depends. They each have different lead times. But the good thing I, is, like you mentioned, we've already started building a lot I, based on our forecast. What so, is the so, worst case scenario? So I, uh, I've sat there and projected counties. And as you were to get closer, even if we're still in the process of working out a contract, if you said, yes, we're going to select you guys, then I would bump your percentage up to like 90% and there will be built right then. So then it would take like the three months. So I've already projected the whole state and uh, what I think about each county and a lot of them are, are, are current. As we have 46 counties in the state now. So it should not take that long for us. We, don't, we should not have a problem. Now if every single county waits till the last minute 
Oh, I took the ballot bin off. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. So. <laughs> Um, do you want to talk about the, the stick and the, the insecurity on yeah. that? I think that would be. Yep, so every piece of equipment we're gonna sh we've shown you, um, results get written to a USB stick. These are uh, proprietary sticks built just for us. They have a little vendor ID uh, on the inside that all of our machines use to identify it as our sticks. So if you had somebody that somehow gained access to the USB ports, they got their hands on a barrel key, and, bypass any other physical security you have in place and they try to put in a stick from Office Depot it wouldn't read it it would reject it these sticks in addition to having our vendor ID on them also have an encryption key that gets put on there and it's unique for every election so every election has a unique encryption key on it and as part of the logic and accuracy process that key gets put on every machine to make it unique for that election and what that means then is say um, uh, nothing malicious, but a common mistake might be maybe a primary stick gets reintroduced out into the general. Somebody tries to put that in. It passes the check that it's our stick, the vendor ID check, but that's uh, the wrong encryption key for the general election. It would reject that stick. So all the information is encrypted and everything's digitally signed as well. Um, does anybody have any questions about the security of the stick? That can be a, a pretty big sticking point for, yeah. for some people, yeah. rightly so. Yes. I was going to say, the, the sticks themselves, um, if somebody would walk off with that, A, can another stick be put in and you can continue with that machine, or is that a crisis? Uh, no, you could put in a new stick. And what you would probably do is, um, are you talking like middle of election day, for yeah, example? Yeah, yeah, that's it, what I'm talking about. The one the thing is it'll be locked. The only person will have a key to get in there is, is the judge of election. I'm just However, saying, because yeah. you all have the same key, you have somebody that used to be an election director, whatever, somehow. they got a key. They open it somehow. Yep. And they pull that out. Yep. And they can, you know, is that, the second part of it is, is that stick capable of working in all the polls? or is it only specific to one poll? Because some of them came in and said, it doesn't matter which machine goes where, when you start it up, you do it specific to a poll. So there's two scenarios. Let's talk about the machine that just got uh, robbed, and then we'll talk about the machine where that person, that rogue agent, took it to. Okay. So the one that got robbed, Mike would have to say that was precinct three. Mike would have to produce another precinct three stick, put it in. So they're specific to the precinct. I, you would also want to grab those ballots out that were cast before the, the robbery. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to rescan those because now you don't have a stick with the result from those ballots that were cast on it. So you can bring those back to your central counter or how, you know, however procedurally you want to handle. But yes, you could be up and running again in precinct three by putting in another precinct three stick. So we good on that part? Yeah. Now it's, not thief, it's not programmed for all the different precincts. No, no. no for that precinct. Now the thief goes to another poll site and tries to introduce the stick into the machine. So they open up, they take precinct fours out, and they put precinct threes in. It will not allow it because there's a step that you have to do in between changing of precincts. And it's that encryption process that I talked about. You have to use the, it's called EQC, election qualification code. You have to use that EQC step between. So if somebody got their hand on a poll stick, they don't have all the keys to the castle to make any changes on the machine. Good question. Uh, hopefully, you've got good physical security at your polls. Yeah. You manage your keys and you don't let people get in the side of the case. But you want to ask uh, so just before we get going, you wanted to show them the high speed scan. Yeah. So what we have is um, the, this would be something for for Lebanon County to count your absentees on at the end of the night. So this is not for the polling place, <laughs> okay? And it's also uh, Susquehanna counts all their ballots on it. So it's a high-speed scanner. You can do what you're doing now and, you know, purchase a few extra of the DS-200s there, feed them one at a time, okay? I, or, or, no, you don't do that now, do you? You hand count. Now, yeah, so for the poll workers that are here, this would replace hand counting at the polls. This is this is something similar that, we're look, that I would, would like to see because I'm trying to get a central count um, and have the absentees counted um, centrally, instead of being hand counted at the polls, and as we know, the issues we have. Well, they, but you guys like staying there later, don't you? Yeah, well, especially in presidential years. 
Okay, so um, as mentioned, it's great for counting absentees at a quick rate, but you could also use it uh, to recount like your election day ballots. If you had a recount, you could set it up for that. Or you could just use it as a sorter because as you'll see here, you put your ballots on top, we got a little swing arm here, just kind of hold it against the side. And once ballots are on the scanner, green lights up, you hit start. This, this one's called our DS450. It counts 90 a minute. So what you're seeing right now is about 90 a minute. We have a bigger one on the truck downstairs that does uh, 300 a minute. It's called the 850. Three out stack bins, you can program them however you'd like. Kind of common use is everything that gets counted without exception is on the bottom. Anything with a write-in gets counted and put in the middle just so you can review those write-ins right away if you'd like. And the top is reserved for anything I couldn't count. And I think I have a ballot in here that shouldn't count because I tore the corner off of it. But well, why, why can't they put it into that machine at the end of the night since that already has a scanner? Well, you could on the, if you had these full-size ones, you would need a DS200. No, but if we if we use the size that uh, with this card, yeah, yeah. You could, you could. You're sending them to an absentee voter for them to fill out. I don't know if you'd be able to. Be a full page ballot. The absentee yeah. ballot would be full page. Oh, they won't get one of the small ones no, though. It's going to be a full page, and then what's nice about this would be is if if any law changes come along, that, like they're talking about, like no fault absentee ballots. Uh, we, we, we envisioned that the number of absentee ballots will increase, uh, so then we would be prepared to be able to handle that. But then also what this allows us to do is if we have a recount, uh, then we can recount with that, correct? Yeah, and the nice thing about it for Mike is in that scenario is, say the recount is on the mayor race or a non-county wide office, it's, it's literally a click of the button in the program to make a new stick for this that only counts the mayoral race. You don't have to sort all your ballots out for the ones that have that applicable race. Just put them all on here. It will outstack anything that doesn't have mayor and count all the ballots that have mayor on it. So it's great just for getting through ballots right away or getting your hands on the specific ones that you want because uh, your recount laws uh, don't allow you to do a recount on the original piece of equipment that was used to count it in the first place. You've got to use a different piece of equipment. So counties that don't have a high-speed counter when they're faced with a recount, they may be looking at hand counting if they don't have an alternate piece of machinery. Right. So this gives you that alternate source that's compliant for recount laws. And like I mentioned, it will we can set it up very easily to just count what you want it to count. That way you're not producing reports or calling any attention to other offices that aren't applicable for the recount. Yeah. Does it do different ballot sizes? <clears throat> yes, it does. Um, in addition to length, I got a stack here. To that end, if you if you went with a every voter, you know, option two, we were talking about every voter votes on this, you're gonna have a bunch of these at the end of election day, right? Right. This little swing arm, there's a cutout in the plate here so that I can handle the the small pieces of paper so I can count that way. And notice I didn't have to hit any switches or tell it anything. It's just ready to count any of our ballots at any time. And the same sort laws, sort rules apply. So anything, anything here had a write in, Pollyanna. You put the ballots in upside down, backwards, any, any way. And it, it's taken, it, it, uh, it scans the ballot front and back also, so you can adjudicate it on the screen, which we're going to show uh, Kevin and, and, and Sarah and everybody afterwards, whenever, you know, how to do the software and how to pull up the results and how to adjudicate ballots. Um, I know that's big for you guys. Now, how does that do with folded ballots, though? Because our absentees are folded, for the most part. Can you do me a favor and maybe fold one? That one that yeah, that broken. one's the one with the broken. <laughs> that one's broken. Hey, fold one. You just broken. Broken. <laughs> yeah, it did say broken. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Pretend the dog chewed on it. <laughs> so if it has tears and stuff like that, it won't go through either. It'll just if, the, like apple if these boxes get interrupted, okay. that's what it's looking for. Right. It uses all and these boxes. Just sort it. Yeah, yeah just sort it to the top and your, your remake board or whatever you may call them. Um, want to put some on there. Yeah. I get a Thanks, guys. Teamwork. Um, these were designed for folded ballots. And what I mean by that is these little rollers in here, they're spaced every three and a half to four inches. What, the reason we did that is we're constantly keeping a grip on this piece of paper to keep it nice and flat. 
we actually, that set you saw me run through had about 30 folded ballots in it, but after giving a bunch of demos, they just get flattened by this thing. So I would assume you normally would probably do some back bending, but just to show like how user friendly it is, just throw them on there. Should have a ride in on it. Yeah, ride in. Uh, it handles folded ballots extremely well. Even the one, the 850 that does 300 a minute, exact same thing. Rollers every three inches. Nice mm -hmm. tight grip on those pieces of paper as they go through. Is that what you have still to now, Sarah? Have yeah, we that? have the 650, which is the dinosaur Older. version yeah, of that. Older. That does Sarah's not county handle. Is central, central <laughs> county, so they're all paper ballots. They send all their ballots back to their county, and then she runs them through what she just described. I, I would like to say we addressed every issue we had with the 650. We learned a lot. Like the one she had didn't sort, so if she wanted to stop for a write in or overvote, it, that's what it would have to do is stop. So you could pull that off the top and keep going. So the 650 actually is faster. But this through we call it throughput is way faster on this because it's not having to stop. Right. <laughs> yes. What's the warranty on that, and how often have you had to fix them because they broke, especially at a critical time? So all of them come with a one-year warranty. Sorry, I'll tread on your ground a little bit here. And then we sell different maintenance packages, um, which I think you guys are all familiar with because it's the same idea. We have gold, silver, and bronze, as we call it. And gold means we show up every year and do a preventative maintenance on it. Silver means we show up every other year. A lot of people, I know this is going off the rails from what you asked, but I'll, I'll swerve back. Uh, a lot of people might do like a silver on this maybe every other year. Um, but something like this, I, I don't mean to speak for you all, but I don't know if you have a package on your 650, you may we have don't. somebody come out every year because you have elections. We do. But to your, to your question about uh, breaking, maybe Cutter, what's like a common part and how often? Or? Well, preventative maintenance will prevent most of your, thank you. They're behind the machine for that whole half but, but in the event that there's a failure on election day, we have technicians floating so you know they generally respond I mean the within two hours or so like that so the short answer is we haven't had many issues with the 450 like we have with the 650 yeah, I can't really we just haven't had awesome. we're all we're all at a loss because we haven't just haven't had that many issues or the 850 they, they just kind of so this has been on a van for how long now it's been on a van for well, it was on a van for a couple months in April, and then it's on a van for miles. three weeks. We're not treating it like you normally would. Normally, it gets installed somewhere, and it probably doesn't move too often. We're putting it on a cargo van and driving it county to county every day, and we turn it on, and it runs ballots right away. So I've been super happy with it as a salesperson from the to have the confidence to just power this up off of a van, and it works. Yeah. Good. Storage. Is there recommendations for how you store them, temperature control, things like that? Does that matter uh, what, for any of these items, really? What all of these are tested to, so the federal, thank you, the, the federal certification uh, makes sure that these always operate reliably between 60 and 95 degrees. And then they have a humidity range as well, and I can't remember what that percentage is. But it, it's pretty much accommodates like a low environmentally controlled warehouse scenario. You know, where you're, you're not, it's not like an air conditioned office. These can survive in warehouse conditions. With each of these, uh, do we show the Karen case? Yes. I would love to see that. This, uh, as you saw in the beginning, comes down and we have tarps, dust covers would be a nice way to store it. And then the express boats, we would recommend you put them in here. This is also what you're, you would probably transport them to the poles in. That is a padded, lined transport case, uh, which also has a spot for the power cord in it. So everything the pole site would need for the express boat is self-contained in that. And I would store them in that. Do you have cases that you, well, I'm sorry, I know, keep interrupting. Uh, cases, there's some way to like multiple, if you people are buying those, as you say, that they're going to have those as no, like they're replacing in, the I electronic. They're going to be individual. Don't. Okay, but you don't have like a, a cart. To, yeah, I guess it's, I'm just wondering if you come up with a way. Just because, it's, like I'm saying, like we have ten IVOs at the uh, polling location, so. We do not have one yet. Uh, there are third-party vendors that have developed some okay. carts, and they've 
come to us with those solutions and said, hey, we'd like to partner with you. I don't know if we have any in West Virginia, but yeah, we do. <laughs> Cart carts do or will exist in a variety of flavors. We normally don't get into that level. We normally partner with people. Sorry, go ahead. You, I know you, I've been interrupting you about a thousand times. Uh, you provide all the paper products, correct? Through William Penn, our partner. And yeah. do you use recycled paper? Oh, he just stepped out. Uh, I doubt it because, I can probably answer that. Because we actually have a proprietary blend of paper. Um, I know it's going to sound ridiculous because at the end of the day you're thinking it's paper, but it's 80 pound stock that meets all the election needs, which is there's a lot higher retention rules in this industry than a lot of paper products have to deal with. And uh, actually, what's also unique about our piece of paper is it's built to be folded. Like a lot of paper, it matters what way you lay the grain. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a tree in another form, and so there's little grains of wood. And we lay that grain horizontally so that when you fold it, you're not breaking it and the paper doesn't get all, like if you've ever seen bad paper when it's folded, it gets all fuzzy and stuff. That's not going to be good if that's right across an oval. So like down to the little things like that, we think about with our blend of paper. So no, I, they're, if William Penn's using recycled stock, they're not using our recommended stock. <laughs> Sorry if that was more granular than you cared to. <laughs> that's like my second, that's my second unintentional I pun. I heard the first one. It's a very woodsy answer. Oh, that's <laughs> Thank you. So, we like to sit down and actually negotiate a price with each county. Okay, because... Um, but you have to start there, somewhere. Yeah, but we're, we're trying to... And we were talking to Mike about... Um, you know, maybe some multi-county discounts, so to speak. So you hate to lock into something standing up there. However, these are about 5,300 for the whole unit. These are about 33, and the express flows of Chabba there is about 4,700. So roughly about 9,000 for a precinct if you just went one and one. But then you're pre-printing your ballots. Everything. But then with this one, it would be 4,700. You don't need that stuff. Right. However, you're going to need you're going to need as many you have four of those. You're going to need four of that. Yeah. yeah. So. And you need one of those at least in each precinct. Yeah. So it's, it's it, it, it it kind of comes back to whether you want to print your ballots, whether you and I'm sure Mike will do some uh, analyzing, especially from his previous background of of uh, what it would cost for paper printing over 10, 15 years in regard to buying more of these or them. So it's kind of it's a whole cost analysis. Yeah. I was going to say, I heard you perfect. say that that paper would cost as much as those these over cost, the 10 years. These cost 10 cents, and they can be reused. So they're not going to be thrown away because they're just blank pieces. Unused of, ones can be used. Unused ones, election. sorry. Yeah. If they, if they, if they, <laughs> I saw your face. So, like, what? so <laughs> right now, right now, if you were to send like your 110% of ballots out there and you had a 20% turnout, you're throwing away 80% of your ballots. Okay, here you would take the other 80%, bring them back, and use them next election. The, the you know, the 20% that voted, you're going to store them like you normally would ballots. Okay. And Got the 450? Oh, they're like 50,000. <laughs> but it's a, it's a, it's a high-speed scanner. That's a, yeah. I mean, the other one is, is actually a lot more, but it does mm -hmm. 300 a minute. Yeah. Thank you. Because some people, some people will buy these to do their absentees, and then they need like six of them, and it takes them ten times as long as one of them, and you're spending almost the same amount of money as a high-speed scanner when you start, because you're feeding these one one at a time. Ten a minute, if you're scanning absentees, 90 a minute, or the 300 a minute. It's the and, three and, flavors. And in all honesty, when you're hand counting, th there are mistakes. Especially after a 15-hour day, and you have, you know, committee people there and everybody and, and, and stuff like that for not just the poll workers, but even if we sat here and hand counted up here, we'd probably come up with a couple of different answers. Um, so it's it's a little more accurate too. Joe, for like five minutes, and then we'll let the commissioners go. Meet you. Can you just talk a little bit about the poll, the electronic poll, um, and just a little bit about the activity and how? how the SNS handles that. Okay, so first thing is, I put in two letters, PA, okay? So the poll worker would actually, you guys come up and play with it afterwards. I know it's hard to see back there, okay? You put in 
you know, if I come in, it's Passerelle, I come in, you might just put in PA or PAS, and then you'll see it pop up on the screen, okay? So these, these popped up, and we have been using this a lot. I clicked on to uh, Michael Pannone, and uh, I'm going to issue a ballot for Michael, okay? Now it says go get the signature. Did I press it? Yeah, there it goes. And what happens is the screen went upside down because this goes over to the voter for the voter to sign, okay? And then it, it comes back, and what the voter's going to sign in there, okay, and then accept his own signature. And it comes back to the voter, and you know how in your paper poll books now you have to, you're supposed to compare the signatures, but you have the pre-printed, digitized, what the one. So that one is what I just did, and that's what's on file. Okay, so it's just digitized in here as opposed to digitized and printed on your poll book. Okay, now I'm the poll worker, I'm going to accept the signature. And I apologize, this is set up for a, a state that you can pick a party. And we, we don't do that here. And what I'm going to do is you can either issue a ballot, and it will just print out something here with like Republican or Democrat on it for them to take to whoever's doing your ballots. Or if you're using this type of system and you bought the express vote printer here. <clears throat> Oops, I have to. <laughs> Do you want me to show you how to use that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it would print the, the ballot style on here for the voter. Okay, but this is obviously an option, you know, off of this. Okay, so I actually sold poll books to uh, Susquehanna County, and the one thing I want to ask you is I don't want to, how do your poll workers like having electronic poll books? I was actually going to say, advocating for the poll pad in general. Um, we have a different brand, but the, our poll workers absolutely love them. Right. They were a little skeptical at first about the new technology, yeah, yeah. but we've used them in, what, three elections now? Yeah. And every time they come back, they just say, this is amazing. Thank you. It makes things so much easier. It's easier for me as a director. So they, they're amazing. So in, in a nutshell, uh, there are. I was at those poll worker classes, and I remember a couple people coming in and I don't, yeah. I don't like the tech <laughs> And they walked out, oh, we like this. Because literally flipping pages and you can't find the name and everything takes so long. So when you get to a presidential election, the voter process goes so much faster. You're literally just clicking on some screens. They, they sign. And it's all recorded electronically. After the election, you just upload your voter history into the system. And uh, you know, yeah, so that you're not amazing. scanning all the barcodes on. Because it would take me probably three. Or <laughs> 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 it would take yeah, like three or four days right. to scan those in afterwards. But now I just I coordinate with the company. They coordinate right. with Shore, and so it's it's a lot. But the biggest advantage in my mind is in like a presidential election, where you you generally have lines at the table because it's just it's not it's not the poll worker's fault. It just everybody comes at the same time. And it takes longer to be flipping through the pages and everything. So here, it's just a quicker process that those lines can go through. And I think that's the biggest benefit, which you haven't seen you, yet in the presidential. Do you yet. guys have the option on these ones to show that when they show up to, at the wrong precinct where yes. they can go? Yes. So, so, so if I leave and print a map. Yeah. yeah. And so that's where I will other. say the poll workers to eliminate phone yeah. calls and the poll workers from having to stop what they're doing to have to call the office to say, hey, we don't have this person in, the, in right. our book. We can say they can now see, like, okay, if they are supposed to vote in three and they show up in four, hey, so you got to go to three. What, what I'll show you when you come up is you, you, you have your, your precinct on the screen, and then if you can't find them, you hit the entire county, and then the county comes up, and then you find that person, and then you find out where they vote, and you can just print their address. You can look, there's a Google map there, too, but they're not... Yeah, you're going to probably print the address of the polling place that they go to. As a matter of fact, Sarah bought a couple extras for her office. Instead of using the Shure system, they use that so they can actually text somebody or where they have to go or something. You, yeah. I would have let the commissioners go. Yeah. Go, but um, do you have information on your poll books that I would be able to share with them? Um, it's, so in, it's in their pack. Okay. But, yeah. I did put yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> for a small fee. Uh, do the commissioners have any questions? I know I've been going to kind of keep your presentation to an hour and a half, 15 minutes. Or, so. How do we do? We're, we're, right, we're right in there. We're good. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. Uh, and we'll, be at, we'll be at CCAPS. Um, so uh, I know all... I think